There's a very easy citizenship available to a bunch of the world that many people do not talk about. Now, to be fair, it's not available to everybody, but it comes with potentially a bunch of tax benefits as well as some other things. And it has been massively rising in popularity, not really too surprising, and I'll explain why in a minute, over the last while. However, the government is talking about possibly instituting some changes around that citizenship, and so we're going to talk about it today. Now, the interesting thing about this country is this is a place that when I ask people what places have improved, actually comes up as having improved a lot in the minds of many. So I do this kind of mental model and I invite you to do this experiment with me right now, okay? Think about the world, think about the countries in the world, all right? Now ask yourself which places in the world you believe with a high degree of confidence will be substantially better 10 years from now than they are today. And I think lots about this trajectory question because if you're in a great place and the place is getting worse, well, you know, it's not so great. And if you're in a place that is mediocre but getting great, then there's something to be said for that. And this is actually one of the things that attracted me to UAE for quite a while was the fact that UAE has just a very upwards trajectory, far more than most other places in the world from my perspective. Now, you can take this mental model, maybe to kind of think about what places you would say, but now let's try reversing it, okay? Think back 10 years and say which places in the world were, you know, uh, not nearly as good 10 years ago as they are today. In other words, which places have improved dramatically over the last 10 years? Again, this is kind of, you can see the trajectory of a place. And again, I would point out some place like UAE is a great example of a place that has improved a lot. But if you start to think about a lot of the traditional places, it's really questionable whether this is the case. If you were to ask a lot of people, is Canada dramatically better today than it was 10 years ago? This is questionable. Some people would say that it is worse, right? Uh, certainly not obvious that it's much better. The US, same sort of deal. France, same deal. UK, same deal. Like you just start running down the list and what places have really dramatically improved in the last 10 years in a way that you uh, notice it, right? How it affects your personal life. Well, one place that has, according to some people who I know who live there and have commented on it, is Israel. So Israel is, you know, maybe a little bit under talked about area for a lot of people. There's lots of reasons for this. I mean, clearly there has been, you know, tons of problems in that region, right? Lots of kind of war and violence and terrorism, and all these different things that, you know, uh, are concerning. I remember being in Tel Aviv and getting out of the elevator and there was this sign on the wall that said, when the sirens start, don't panic. You have two minutes to get to the basement. <laughs> and I thought, it's not if the sirens start, it's when the sirens start, don't panic. And you know, that told you a little bit about being in Tel Aviv. Now, granted, if we were to go from where we are today, go back, you know, a couple decades, certainly the friction and conflict, et cetera, in that region seemed much worse than it is today. Doesn't mean that things can't erupt tomorrow. Obviously we know the whole area is, you know, a bit of a powder keg. So, you know, you've got some concerns. But this being said, I've been told it has improved a lot. And one of the interesting examples of where it is apparently really exceptional, uh, according to, again, some people who I know who live there, who use it, is the medical system. The medical system works remarkably well compared to, for example, someplace like Canada, right? It's one thing to say, hey, we have free healthcare. It's another to have the free healthcare be really excellent when you actually need it to do what you're doing. So anyway, Israel is a place that for anyone with Jewish ancestry, you only need one grandparent who was Jewish, uh, you can get citizenship essentially instantly, essentially for free, which is pretty phenomenal. And as a result, what you've been seeing are a lot of Russians and Ukrainians going to Israel. Now on top of this, they will offer you 10 years of foreign income tax free, and they give you some other bonuses, etc. So, I mean, this is kind of hard to disagree with. Now, yes, there are some drawbacks because, for example, some places don't want you to have an Israeli passport, right? Also, a lot of people may not want to go and live in Israel. And so, you know, that's its own set of trade-offs, right? It's, it's not for everyone for sure. However, I think for the right people who can qualify for it, it's amazing. Now, you know, all kinds of people, there, there's all sorts of corruption in the system of getting people in who wouldn't normally be able to get in. And, you know, the, pass, the Israeli passport is pretty good. It's not phenomenally amazing. For example, they don't currently have visa-free access to the US, although there's some talk about them getting that in the near future. So that would make the passport even better. But if you're thinking, look, I'm in a position where I could take advantage of having a backup passport,
what am I going to do? I could buy a Caribbean passport, perfectly reasonable. We help people with that all the time. If you want help, please reach out to us. Uh, Turkish passport, you could get that, sure, fair enough. Maltese passport, sure, same sort of deal. Like, these are all options that are available to you, but a Maltese passport is pretty expensive by most people's standards. Uh, a passport like uh, a Turkish passport is not very good. A Caribbean passport is sort of middle of the road, right? It's not quite as good as, say, like, you know, if you're talking about having a U.S. passport, for example, and giving it up, it's not quite as good, right? So, so you're losing something meaningful there. Uh, and you're in a situation where, on the flip side, if it is uh, that you're going from a you know, maybe worse passport, it's still not as good as something like as an, Israeli, an Israeli passport, and it's not as cheap. So the government is talking about instituting a new rule where you have to live there for a year in order to get the citizenship. Now, honestly, this would be pretty low compared to the standards of almost any part of the world. But this being said, it is an elevated standard. Uh, but I think for people who are interested in some sort of an alternative, if you can qualify, you should. This is a really good opportunity. I, I almost always tell people, if you can get, say, a citizenship by ancestry, do it, regardless of anything else. You know, just because having that optionality is almost always a good thing. There's very rarely a downside to having an extra passport. Maybe the U.S. is kind of the one major exception. There's a few others, like, you know, if you had Iranian or something like that. Okay, fair enough. But most of the time, having a second passport or a third passport or a fourth passport is, it's just an extra piece of optionality that's valuable. And there's a lot of people who can qualify, either directly or indirectly, through getting an Israeli citizenship. And it's not on many people's radar, but the truth is there's an outrageously high number of startups there. There's just tons of fintech. I remember hanging out there and talking to some people. They said, oh yeah, I heard, you know, there's like 500 fintech companies in Israel. They're like, 500? It's like 500 in my block, you know? There's so many. Uh, and so it's a big startup ecosystem, it's a big tech ecosystem. Essentially, you kind of get all the people who have gone through military training, uh, developing technical skills, and then doing startups. A very uh, startup-driven culture, very entrepreneurial culture, lots of different uh, ventures coming out of there. Uh, as a result, you've got much more interest from big companies who have gone and started to locate their offices there. There's much more interest in venture capital going there. You probably don't want to make it your forever place in that regard. But as a place to build something, as a place to build some connections, as something to take advantage of, I think it's well worth considering for the right people. So if you have any questions about it, reach out to us. If you're interested in passports in general, or second residencies or citizenships, or optimizing your global tax, doing banking around the world, relocating, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me at calendly.com forward slash michael dash rothmark link in the description below, or send a message through offshorecitizen.net, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.